From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Good day and welcome. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from a grateful donor from Victoria, British Columbia. This Mass is offered in loving memory of her husband on the second anniversary of his death and in thanksgiving for the televised Mass. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is the Feast of the Presentation. It is also Candlemas Day, and it is the day of prayer for consecrated life. To celebrate all these great moments in the church's life, we pause for a moment and ask the Lord for forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that, just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so, by your grace, we may be presented to you with minds made pure through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord. See? 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A light for revelation. Today is the Feast of the Presentation. It's also Candlemas. And it's also a day of thanksgiving and prayer for men and women in consecrated life. The Jesuit poet Gerard Manley Hopkins writes these words. Some candle clear burns somewhere I come by. It's from his poem about the candle indoors. And it's a story. We think about a priest who's on bringing communion to the sick and taking care of people who will at night and he walks by a cottage so very often late at night and he sees a a candle burning in the cottage and the candle is uh, always lovely and warm and it it attracts him very very deeply and he thinks about the people who were in there peasant farmers who were there wondering about their lives and, and the kind of glory they give to God it's not exactly clear whether the peasant who's walk, whether the priest is walking by is Hopkins himself or just any person who's struggling with their faith because the longing and the desire is that the candle that they see burning indoors uh, may be in their heart as well. And, and they're, they're deeply troubled. They're searching for some sign, some indication of God's glory and presence in their midst. Now, candles have a very obvious universal significance. I I think in every religion, they're used in in some manner or another in worship in the churches and ceremonies. We know it has universal secular uh, significance. Whenever there's a tragedy, whenever there's some event that causes great suffering, the first thing you see at the site of the tragedy, they have a vigil and they have a a vigil with candles. I remember very distinctly when I was at St. Michael's Cathedral, time of 9-11, people were coming into the cathedral constantly asking for candles, wanting to light candles in light of this tragedy. And uh, Elton John wrote his beautiful song, A a, a Candle in the Wind, at, at the time of Princess Diana's funeral. So the candle is very much of universal significance. It tells us that we remember the the life or the life that we're lost. We want to remember them especially. The candle is a symbol of how fragile can life be, wickering. It can be blown out very easily. But it's also an indication that we hope that the candle won't be blown out completely, uh, that there'll be more life, that there'll be renewal, that, that goodness will be restored. And the candle has extraordinarily powerful significance in our own Christian Catholic faith. Right at the beginning of the scriptures, God says, in the midst of the darkness, let there be light. And that light shines through the chosen people and particularly powerfully in the scriptures and the covenants and the testament that was given to them. And today in scripture, it's magnificently displayed with Mary holding the child in the temple. Here's a young woman, perhaps 13 or 14, 
Um, she's very frail. She has a child in her arm, and the child is always not only the symbol, but the reality of new life, that, that people are going to go on, that our species, that life is not in vain, that people have children, and they bring them to birth, and they present them to God in the temple. Now, when you think of the picture of Mary in the temple, she's a young woman, and she's very fragile, she's very, very vulnerable. So you know that in addition to protecting and caring for the child in her arms, uh, she needs to be protected and cared for too. And that comes very clearly later in, in, in the text of the gospel when Simeon says a sword will pierce her own soul too. So she and the child are not invulnerable from the kind of evil in the world that was there then and is present in our world. So it's a fragility and it's a vulnerability and it's also subject to evil. But there's a powerful faith there, the presentation. Here, this young woman uh, with, with vulnerability, knowing the possibility that, that this child or she could be hurt, still with hope and confidence carries on. And that's again, tremendously manifested in the life of Jesus. Constantly, he puts his hand on the people who are blind. He wants people not only to see physically, but also to see spiritually, to understand what is going on in their hearts. St. John says, the light came into the darkness and the darkness could not overwhelm it, could not overcome it. In his preaching, in his teaching, Jesus was always pushing back the, um, the barriers of ignorance, of, of us being obtuse, of, of, of not seeing the beauty of the truth that he came to proclaim. He speaks often using the words of the prophet Isaiah, he will not quench the wickering flame. That is, wherever there's a little bit of life, wherever it's growing, God doesn't mean for it to be blown out. It's weak, it's vulnerable, but, but Jesus came to, to bring it into a full and powerful fire. And even in himself, when he died, he, his being was not totally quenched. Yes, he died, but he rose again with great power and great beauty on resurrection morning. And that's why we in the Catholic Christian tradition hold up the Easter candle. The light is indeed among us. And that has implications for, for you and me. The light can't be extinguished. In the poem I quoted by Gerard Manley Hopkins, halfway through the poem, he says, Come you then indoors, come home. And what Hopkins is referring to is not only to come into that cottage where the peasants have the light burning, but also our interiority. Whatever the hostility may be, whatever the, the blocks in our heart, bring that light indoors. Uh, sometimes we don't bring it indoors because we don't want to see it or we're selfish or we mean. We need to change our hearts and, and open those doors of mercy and bring that, that light in. It's not just the question of lighting candles. We need to do that in all situations of hope where there needs to be confidence. In addition to changing our hearts, we have to take action. And that means when there's something like a tragedy, have we as a society in any way caused that tragedy? What action can we do uh, so that, that, that we won't be lighting candles as a memory of death, but as a sign of hope? There's always action. It's not just light the candle, yes, do that, pray, but also take the necessary and appropriate action so that the life, the flame, will be kept alive, alive always. Will you join with me, please, and we'll offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. In praise of God for the light and the truth that come through the life of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord In gratitude for the light of the Holy Spirit shining through the lives of consecrated women and men committed to following in love the evangelical counsels, we pray to the Lord. For the light that comes from people of all faiths and religions and for the talents, science, of scientists, artists, poets, and musicians, we pray to the Lord. Lord for light that alleviates the sufferings of those lacking adequate food, housing, and shelter, and for those with mental health challenges in their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. 
We take a moment, please, to pray for light in our own lives, for our personal intentions, for the people we love and care for, for those united with us in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, true light and source of light, pour into our hearts the brilliance of your eternal love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from all my iniquities. Cleanse me from all my sinfulness. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands. The Lord is May the offering made with exultation by your church be pleasing to you, Lord, who we pray, for you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and the light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with all the saints and angels praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, all the clergy and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of Father Carlo Maria Martini. Lord, help me enter into that peace which consists in having put my life in your hands. Amen. Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, 
bring your grace to perfection within us and as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Lord Jesus, our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and send it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario. L4C 2M6.